Hello, I'm Tom Gregory with Youngstown Christian Television. Thanks for joining us on the YouTube channel here and watching the program that you're about to see. Before you do that, if you could hit the subscribe button and join us, that way you'll always be informed of what's going on with Youngstown Christian Television every time we put a new video up on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Hey, welcome back to What's the Bible Say About? It's a program we do here on YCTV. We like to investigate God's Word and Scriptures and find out what the Bible says about any particular topic. If you've got a subject in mind, you want something covered that we haven't covered, please let us know. The information is magically appearing on your screen as I say this. I hope it is in the edit. It should do that anyway. Hey, uh, a good program, a really good topic. We're going to talk about the Trinity. Is the word Trinity in the Bible? What is the Trinity? And there are some Christian faiths, they say they're Christian faiths. Are they really Christian? Because they deny the Trinity exists. Um, with me to discuss that is a guy that really knows what he's talking about, and I'll let him tell you why he's qualified to talk about this. With me, David Suarez. David, thanks for coming. You're a member of Steel Valley Church. That's you right. host programs and you do discussions and topics and teachings and stuff like that. So, David, what's your education? Yes, well, uh, nice to be here again. And over at Steel Valley Church, I work as a pastoral apprentice. Actually, I just graduated from the pastoral apprentice program, but my undergrad was in pre-medical health and human biology, a little bit different from what I'm studying for my master's right now. <laughs> just a little. Just a, yeah. just a tiny yeah, bit. Yeah. Uh, my master's right now in seminary is mm -hmm. in Christian apologetics. Okay. And so I'm trying, for anybody who doesn't know what apologetics is, based off the Greek word apologia, which means defense, defense of. So it's how to defend the Christian faith using science, philosophy, mathematics, logic, reason, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And currently I'm about halfway through my master's, okay. uh, but in this time, and especially at Steel Valley, I've had such wonderful, incredible chances to teach the young adults. Uh, and as well, I've been able to offer a few sermons, thank God, that okay. I think went okay. Yeah. yeah <laughs> as long as yeah. the message of the scripture came they out, then. haven't thrown you out as a heretic yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> okay. Not yet. <laughs> all right, all right. So we're going to talk about the Trinity. First of all, mm. where did the word Trinity ever come from? Is the word Trinity in the Bible? Well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible okay. specifically, which a lot of people are sometimes freaked out about, but that's yeah. not too much of an issue when you get yeah. down to it. Uh, and the term Trinity is actually a very early church concept. Uh, I, I'm forgetting specifically the individual in the third century who had actually coined the term, but the concept is actually an Old Testament concept that was held by many Jewish leaders and rabbis, oh, really? even in the BC period. Okay. Uh, in some cases, and you could see this from Dr. Michael Heiser, the late and great Michael Heiser, I know he passed away earlier this year, but he would speak on the two powers of heaven, which is this doctrine held by many Jewish people mm -hmm. before the birth of Christ, that there was this sense in which there's this multiplicity of persons in the Godhead. Uh, and, and this is because it's found in the Old Testament. Mm. Some Jewish leaders would say, even in the Talmud and other rabbinic writings as well, or pre-rabbinic writings, they would state that there seems to be a sense in which God and His Word are distinct persons, then according to some excellent Hebrew literary work from other scholars, mm -hmm. like Anthony Rogers, incredible work on his end, it seems as though many other Jewish writers would read Genesis and they would write commentaries about Genesis. You see, it's not just us modern Christians writing commentaries on the Bible. Sure, yeah. Even in the BC era, you yeah. know, you still had uh, rabbis and teachers doing this. And they would actually write in Genesis a distinction between God and then God's Word still being God and then His Shekinah, which they would actually equate to the Spirit of God. 
okay. as we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, sure. where the Spirit's hovering over the surface of the waters. Okay. So this notion of a plurality of persons in the one God is actually a very, very old idea, yeah. which eventually in the A.D. era yeah. started to get its own formulation, its own wording, yeah. so to speak. Well, didn't that start in Genesis 1-1? One, one? It did. It did, yeah. in, in a and, very real sense. And, and, and uh, no, I'm sorry, not Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Well, no, um, when it says... In the creation God, of man, let exactly. us create man in our, our image. image. That's right, Genesis yeah. chapter 1. Yeah. That's, that's correct. That's actually part of the argument for this plurality of persons in the one being, God. Okay. Because in Genesis 1, verses 1 to 3, right, even Genesis 1, 1 to 2, you mm -hmm. have, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, and also later, you know, the Spirit of God hovers over the surface of the waters. Mm -hmm. But then later in Genesis chapter 1, you do see God using this very interesting uh, description of himself. He says, let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. And this is important because whether someone's Christian or a non-Christian Jewish individual, maybe they're, they're Muslim, everybody would agree that angels play no part in the creation of man. You yeah, know, like we, yeah. we, angels, we are not made in the yeah. image of angels, right? So when God says, let us make men in our image, if someone said, well, he could have been talking to the angels, I would say, well, were we made in the image of angels? To which they would say, no. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, there we go. So yeah. back to what's happening, mm -hmm. it says, let us make men in our image, right? Okay. So that means that God is speaking, but he is speaking with an us or a we. Mm -hmm. Some people would try to get around this by saying, mm -hmm. well, maybe he's using some sort of a royal we, like yeah. the, the king and queen in England. Yeah. But yeah. this is anachronistic. Yeah. That's some reading. people speak in the third person. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they would try to say. But the issue is that's an anachronism, right? That's reading modern ideas and something outside of Jewish ancient Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We're reading that into the yeah. Hebraic text. So some people would say, God said, let us create man in our image. So God must look like us. God yeah. must look like a human, right? I've heard that. So yeah, I, I have what do you got for well. that? So people take image in a very weird way. Mm -hmm. they, they think of image as some sort of physical, identical representation. When that's not really what's happening in the text. Yeah. Image is supposed to say that there's some sort of similarity between God and the specific creation, mankind. Uh, to be made in one's image is to be made literally in their likeness, in the likeness of their nature, uh, perhaps even in the likeness of what makes them unique. Mm -hmm. Right? So God, being creative, because he is the one that creates all things, mm -hmm. makes mankind creative. Humans are very creative, right? We make tools, oh, yeah. we make yeah. buildings, we make yeah. music for some reason, sure. uh, which is amazing. But we, we don't make do... television shows. Exactly. Yes, we... <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And complex things too. Television yeah. shows that have all of this. It's very interesting yeah. how creative in a complex way humans are. Yeah. And that is unique. So when God says, uh, you know, that He's going to make us in His image, it's these qualities of God, right? Uh, a sense of superiority, right? That he makes us to have dominion over the earth, over the yeah. animals, uh, the birds of the air, the oh, fish yeah. of the sea. Yeah. Yeah. That dominion exerted is a way that we image God, who mm -hmm. of course is supremely sovereign over creation. Yeah. And so in all of these different aspects and attributes, we do have a real sense of imaging God, uh, reflecting God's nature mm -hmm. in some of the attributes. Now, of course, in a finite way, because humans are finite, we're limited, God is unlimited, he's infinite. But in these finite ways, humans image certain aspects of God's nature, all to his glory, by showing these little aspects of it, we actually reflect him. God being personal, mm -hmm. which the Trinity, if it's true, makes sense given how God made humans. Mm -hmm. Humans are personal. We desire community of persons, right? Uh, we, we desire to be with other people. Man is not made to be alone, right? Man, man was made to have a partner. So there's a sense in all humans of this desire for community of mm -hmm. persons. And we could say that is another way we image God because God always is a community of persons, mm -hmm. three persons in the one being. Yeah. And so the more you look at humanity and the weirdness of humanity, the good weirdness, the more you start to understand what it means to uniquely image God, to be image bearers, to have the imago Dei, is what mm -hmm. usually used in philosophy and yeah, apologetics. Yeah, heard that, yeah. So that's what I would say. So there's a lot of people that say there is no Trinity. Yeah, 
The yeah. Trinity's not real. It's an invention of the I've heard of the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, exactly. they came up with this yeah, whole the thing. The nice, uh, Council um, of Nicaea. And Council of Nicaea, yeah. And if you follow the Trinity, then which God are you praying to? Are you praying to Jesus as the God, or God as the God, or the Holy Spirit as the God? So you believe in mm. three gods. That, I, I'm just, I've arguments heard, I've, that I've heard. I've heard people say that. It's actually quite wild because okay. Christians Run with strongly, that. strongly, yeah. as a matter of fact, I have that right here on my PowerPoint. He's got yeah. graphics yeah. for uh, us. Just, Love this guy. Just, just to help people. All right, let's take a look at this graphic here. That's exactly right. So in understanding the Trinity, number one, we have to be clear that we as Christians affirm that there is one God. Mm -hmm. That one God exists always, eternally, as three distinct but co-equal and co-eternal persons. Mm -hmm. That is the doctrine of the Trinity. So if someone says you worship three gods, we would say, no, no, we are monotheists. We believe in one God, but that mm -hmm. one God always exists as three persons. And so when people say, oh, well, the word Trinity is not in the Bible, or uh, where in the Bible does it even say? Because th this is a made-up doctrine, right? There's no biblical evidence yeah. for it, yeah. is what people will say. To which I would say, well, number one, besides ignoring the rabbinic and Talmudic tradition, which states that there actually is this Jewish belief. I love how you say that. Well, besides ignoring the Bible. Exactly. Besides ignoring all the facts, the data, and the yeah, research, yeah, 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 yeah. then I'm sure it's made up. But yeah. not at all. The Bible is actually quite clear about the fact that there's a plurality of persons in God. And so when we speak about the Trinity, often people will say, well, okay, a lot of times people can believe oh, the Father is God. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, fair enough. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. right? A yeah. lot of people will say that, but they'll say, well, you're saying the Son is God? That's, that's kind of strange. Well, mm -hmm. not really. If When we say God, we're saying the divine essence. The, the divine essence, the divine nature, if that is God, then mm -hmm. when we say the Father is God, He fully has the divine essence. The Son okay. is God, so He also has that same essence. And the Holy Spirit has the same essence. So that's what we're saying when we're saying God. Mm -hmm. Now, only to use one scripture, people watching the uh, PowerPoint are going to see a lot of scriptures on screen, sure. but only go through a few for the sake of each of these passages. Where does the Bible say the Father is God? Just to clear all of our bases. Sure. So in Galatians chapter 1, Paul mm -hmm. states, Paul, an apostle, not sent from men, nor through the agency of man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. This very clear statement of God the Father. Yes. And so we're good enough there to say that appears in the Scripture, clear mm -hmm. enough. Now, of course, some people might want more than that. So all we would have to say is maybe John 3, 16. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his one and only Son, Son. and whosoever believes in him yeah. would not per if perish. there is him. a Son, there has to be a Father. Father. Yeah. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. And so that very Scripture technically accounts for two. It's two and one for us yeah, there, yeah. but I know some would say, that's cheating, and I'm like, no, that's the Bible. It's all right. You yeah, know? yeah <laughs> we, it's, we, it's scripture. Exactly. It's, it's okay. It's in there. Really, I yeah, yeah. promise. We don't, <laughs> we don't have to worry about, uh, <laughs> about that, but yeah, God the Father, very clearly in scripture, and again, anybody watching the PowerPoint can see all yes. of those verses. Now, oh, yeah. uh, where does the scripture ah. say that the Son is God? Mm -hmm. So this is really important. As a matter of fact, when you're talking with many Muslims, they'll say, where in the scripture does it say... Does Jesus say, I am God, worship me? That mm -hmm. exact wording, I am God, worship me. Now, number one, for anybody who ever hears that, they just learn this from their scholars, their apologists, like Dr. Zakir Naik, and it, uh, probably Amir, uh, was it, Didot. So a couple of these different scholars where people just recite these arguments that don't actually make any sense. Okay. We don't need exact wording to prove something. No, that's true. Like, yeah, that yeah. is the exact word fallacy where they would say, okay, well, where does Jesus say, I am God to worship me, also there is a trinity in this book of the Bible. We don't need that exact wording, it's a pointless argument. Yeah. But, Jesus does say that he is God. So, let's go through some scripture that's mm -hmm. relevant to this topic. All right. Number one, mm -hmm. in Isaiah 44, 6, it is quite clearly stating from the Lord who is speaking, Yahweh, that's mm -hmm. when you see Lord, that means Yahweh. I am the first and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Revelation 1.17 states, I am the first and the last, spoken by Jesus. Mm -hmm. So if we were to say that the same God speaking, and Isaiah 44.6 says, I am the first and I am the last, mm -hmm. and then Revelation says, I am the first and the last, 
then we would say, oh, that's the same being yeah. speaking, right? Yeah. That, that must be, oh, but that's Jesus speaking. Well, now what could this mean? So we clearly have this type of mm -hmm. uh, divine title and claim being applied specifically to Jesus. And he is the one saying it of himself, very clearly in Revelation. Uh, Isaiah 42, 8 says, I am Yahweh, that is my name. This is really important. Yeah. As a matter of fact, talking to Jehovah Witnesses, Muslims, and even Mormons, this is really, really fundamental. Please understand this and pay attention for this passage. It's so important. The name of God is the key to understanding a lot of this. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 42, 8, I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise unto graven images. Mm -hmm. Important passage in Isaiah 42, 8, where the Lord says, I am Yahweh, that is my name. Now look at John 17, 5. This is so interesting. Because we just saw it say, and my glory I will give to uh, not to another. Jesus prayed, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Mm -hmm. In John 17, 5. That is so amazing. Jesus is speaking and saying that he had glory with the Father before the world ever was. Yeah. Which is to say that since God shares his glory with no one, the one speaking must be God. Now, we also go to John 17, a bit further on, where it speaks about Jesus mentioning the name of God. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine. Number one, pause right there. Jesus is claiming that all things that are the Father's are also his. Yeah. Which means all authority and all power and all things proper to the Father are also proper to Jesus. Very big claim for someone who's just a good teacher and a good prophet. Very big claim. That's some serious. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. To say that everything of the Father's is yours, that's, a, that's wild. Yeah. And I've been glorified in them. And I am no longer going to be in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. Mm-hmm. So Jesus is stating that the name which the Father has is the same name which he has. Which is wild because mm. the Lord said, I am Yahweh, that is my name. Yeah. So for the Son to state that he has the same name as the Father, that being Yahweh, mm -hmm. you know, just I am, to state that is to say that the Son is claiming equality of nature, of essence with the Father. Jesus here is saying he is God. He has the same name as the Father. Mm -hmm. That is wild. And then elsewhere, again, that's echoed with Exodus 3, 13 to 14, one mm -hmm. of my favorite passages. So amazing. Okay. It, it's the burning bush, burning bush yes. passage here. So uh, Moses says, uh, what is his name? When they ask me of the one who sent me, they'll say, mm -hmm. they'll say what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Yeah. This is important because of what we see in John chapter 8, verse 58. The, uh, the religious leaders are saying to Jesus, you are not yet 50 years old, they said to him, and you have seen Abraham? Yeah. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, before Abraham was, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Yeah. That is amazing. Jesus just claimed the divine name for himself, saying, the same one speaking to Moses back then is the same one speaking to you right now. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the I am, which is why they picked up stones to stone him. Yeah. They know what claim he just oh, made. Oh, yeah, yeah, they, they, they got that. That was very familiar to them. Yeah, yeah. They knew that, and yet, they rejected it yes. in spite of all the signs and when there's Wonders. miracles, yes. the teachings. Yeah. I just... They, they, they did not understand. It, it, it just goes to show that some people, no matter what evidence you show them, mm -hmm. they will refuse to believe. Yes, they will. It's sad. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sad truth. Yeah. But at least we could let people know, at least you've been shown the evidence. 
Mm -hmm. At least it's on you. It's on you. It's your fault yeah. that you heard it and you just said, nah, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, right. we're called to proclaim and to mm -hmm. teach and spread the message. Exactly. We're not commanded to convert. Yeah. That's yeah. the Holy Spirit's job. That's exactly right. And speaking of the Holy Spirit, yes. we've covered Father, yes. we've covered Son. I believe Trinity is three, so right. where's the <laughs> third person here? Yeah, well, you know what's funny? Uh, when it comes to, and I had so many verses about the Son of God that uh, I had to make extra slides, but the Holy oh, yeah. Spirit is... Uh, a person of the Trinity that people often don't put as much work into understanding where the Scripture speaks about Him. But yeah. it's actually quite clear that the Holy Spirit is given the names and titles of God mm -hmm. often. Uh, for instance, Acts 5 verses 3 to 4 says, But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the proceeds of the land? While it was while it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So in this same passage where Peter says that Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit, he then mm -hmm. ends by saying, you have lied to God. Which is a yeah. very, I mean, I don't even need other verses. That's you, pretty you know, clear. I, I'm sorry, but one of the things I love about Scripture mm. is the more the more you read it, the more you get out of it. Yes. It could be the same passage over and over. And every right. time it's like, oh, just like right yeah. now, I never made that connection before. Yeah. Never. It's that, beautiful. Why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? You've not lied to men, but to God. Yeah. I've never made that. And I've read that. I know the story. His wife and he, they That's conspired. Right. They That's carried right. his wife out. Now mm -hmm. they're going to carry him. Yeah. Mm. Um, and uh, I never made the connection. So I yeah. love I love this book is alive and true. Yes. And it's so powerful. I love this book. Amen. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it's even more mind-blowing the more we go through it. I mean, yeah. even in 1 Corinthians, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple? And that God's spirit lives in you. Mm -hmm. So number one, it says that you are God's temple. Yeah. But then it says, and do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you received from God? So when it says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but here it said it's God's temple. So is it God's temple or is it the temple of the Holy Spirit? The answer is well, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I exactly love it. Right. God's Spirit lives in you. The yes. Holy Spirit who is in you. Yes, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, you do truly, as a Christian, you have God himself living in you. It's amazing. A yeah. fulfillment of all that Jesus promised in the upper room. Uh, and it continues to amaze me. Second Corinthians, this one I didn't even know about until doing some of my research. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 3.17. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So Lord is a term generally, and again, it's a title used to describe God. Yes. Throughout the New Testament, of course, in the Old Testament, but throughout the New Testament, Lord is used to describe God often. Mm -hmm. So when it says, now the Lord, as in just this generic term for God, is the Spirit, then that means that Paul, here in 2 Corinthians, is making a very clear uh, claim. The Lord is the Spirit. As in, the Spirit is the Lord. The Spirit is God. So these titles that are given to the Father and the Son, right, both called Lord, is also given to the Holy Spirit, who is also called Lord. Mm -hmm. It's incredible, and it just continues yeah. to amaze me. I mean, elsewhere, he also is given the attributes of God. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he is identified as life because Jesus is quite clear that uh, in John 14, 6 and John 5, 26, that the Lord is life, right? The Father is mm -hmm. life. The Son is life. Specifically, He oh, is yeah. the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. Yes. And then John 5, 26, where it speaks to the Father having life in Himself, as does the Son, right? Mm -hmm. And so when it says that the Holy Spirit is life, the Spirit of life, that's Romans 8, 2. So again, these attributes that are consistently given to God alone are then described of the Holy Spirit. Even in 1 John 4, 8 and 1 John 4, 16, mm -hmm. where it says that God is love, this exact same claim and attribute is described of the Holy Spirit in Romans 15, 30. Over and over, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is given the same attributes that can only be given to God alone. To God, yeah. And yet, over and over, throughout the Scripture, it says that the Holy Spirit has these same attributes. Not just in the New Testament, but the Old Testament as well. It's incredible with one scripture that simplifies all of it, because then people will say, well, 
you see places where you see parts, but where do you see all of them together? Number one, the baptism of Jesus. The Son is being baptized, and the yes. Holy Spirit in the Holy form Spirit of like a dove. On him, yeah. Exactly. While the mm -hmm. Father out of heaven speaks, this is my beloved Son, so in whom I am well, well pleased. pleased. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an instance where we see all three persons, distinct persons, but one God, one divine essence, proper to each of them. Or, to bring up the name thing again, when it comes to uh, this, this iconic passage, I believe it's going to be found, there it is. In Matthew 28, 19 is the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. That leads my next question. Where exactly. in the Bible are we bringing this together? Exactly. I'm Which is an important question. I'm just going to ask because that's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're yeah. on it. Go it's ahead. It's perfect. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore, this is Jesus speaking. So yes. everybody knows. Because yeah. sometimes we'll say, so it's oh, not this David is not David speaking. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes people say, oh, that was an apostle. I'm like, no, this was Jesus. Yeah. So Jesus says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We already described back in Isaiah the meaning of God saying that he has one name, that is Yahweh, and, and his glory alone. Mm -hmm. So why does it use, and again, just to make it really clear to people, I made some slide about the Greek here. Okay. N name is for okay. sure singular. This is good, yes. That is singular. So why on earth does it say the name, singular, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Well, that's because, as we've already understood and read and seen, there is one name mm -hmm. that is proper to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that is Yahweh. The same Yahweh, the same mm -hmm. I am from Exodus 3, uh, 13 to 14 and Isaiah 42, 8. That mm -hmm. same divine name is said of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in that passage alone is a claim to three persons, one being. It's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Well, we got about two and a half minutes left nice. in the program. So what are your final thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I would say... Mm -hmm. Number one, the Bible is quite clear that there's a plurality of persons. Even in Genesis, it says in Genesis chapter 19, uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord on earth rained down fire from the Lord in heaven. It used the word Yahweh. So people who claim that there's no evidence of multiple persons in the one being, yeah. what I would say, lovingly, of course, yes. is read your Bible. Read your Bible, actually give it a read, look at what's being said, and understand the nature of God through Scripture. Yeah. Of course, I have other slides about the philosophical argument for the Trinity, but that's different. That's mm -hmm. different. From the Bible alone, you can very clearly see that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. Not three gods, one God. Yes. In three distinct persons. Yeah personalities and persons and yeah. and and uh, you are a very intelligent person oh, praise God. seriously I, I love that I'm, I'm getting that I hope you're getting this too uh, very insightful very knowledgeable about what you were talking about with the Word of God you've obviously done your studying mm -hmm. and I uh, commend you for that thank you for being faithful to that that's just wonderful uh, folks we're just about out of time here um, uh, would you continue this further for us oh, into yes. another program? Because yes. I think there's a lot more you have. We've gone through about six, maybe seven slides <laughs> of, of information. And how many do you have prepared here? Uh, about 33. About 33. <laughs> okay. Well, you've got one minute to go through the rest of them. So. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just got to crack my knuckles for Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Now, here we go. Yes. Game on, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I appreciate that. All glory to God. I, I, Amen. I know Amen. only by the guidance of the Holy Spirit would I be able to have the time to focus and see what the Scripture is teaching. Oh, so, yeah. honestly, I thank God for all that He is and all that He does. Yeah, very true. And as always, on what's the Bible say about, don't ever take our word for it. Mm -hmm. Read the Bible for yourself. Any good minister, any good preacher of any good sermon That's will right. want you to do the same thing as the Bereans did. Yes, the They Bereans. examined the scriptures to see if these things were really true mm. instead of just discarding it. Uh, the Christian faith should never be a blind faith. That's right. Go into this with your eyes wide open and your heart wide open. Mm. to God's truth and God's word. And that's all the time we have for today on the program. David, you're going to do this some more for us, I hope. Oh, yes. All right, yes. very good. Look for those programs coming soon. Um, don't know what we're going to call them, but we're going to make them. Right on. All right. 
Thank you, sir. Thank and you. And thank you for watching.